And we're live. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to our post-Christmas edition. I'm Wayne G, joined by Sully. Hey, happy Hanukkah, everybody. <laughs> uh, is, is it still Hanukkah? No, Hanukkah's over. Oh, but, okay. you know. Yeah, we ditched all of the holiday uh, stuff. You can see we're going more of a futuristic look today. We may switch it up again Monday or next Saturday. Who knows? Actually, we have a Atlanta Hawks writer coming on Saturday. So uh, maybe we'll have some Hawks motif to the the stuff. But let's just jump into the video so we can get right going with our show here. Thank you for listening to this Belly Up Sports Podcast Network product. Some said we go belly up, so we made it our name. And we're still here. What's going on, everybody? I'm going to be honest and upfront with everybody. That intro may be coming to an end. I've actually been reaching out to some graphic designers to give us a professional, like, startup, uh, like a cinematic kind of intro to the show. Oh, I like it. I mean, don't get me wrong. That intro gets me gets me fired up. But, you know, bigger and better is never a bad thing. Yeah, definitely. For sure. Being original. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us. I don't have the graphics up. It's a very lazy show today. It is the day after Christmas. It's the day after so, Christmas, folks. It's Boxing Day. Give us a break. Yeah, this is a present for you guys. Like, we don't actually have to be here doing <laughs> yeah, this. <stuff>. Exactly. <laughs> um, but no, obviously, thank you for uh, joining, uh, listening, downloading, streaming. If you're listening to it audio wise, if you are viewing, please share on Facebook, you know, like, subscribe on the YouTube channel. If you're listening, you know, check out the YouTube channel because a lot of visual stuff today is just the visual background, a couple of videos, but not much. But we are going to play some trivia today and kick things off uh, the show. We had teased it uh, last week that we were doing one of our top 10 movies that the top two on my list were Elf and Christmas Story. And you said Christmas Story is yours, Elf is mine. And we said, let's play a special holiday version of you don't know your favorite, and we'll do 10 <laughs> questions about each other's favorite Christmas movies. I'm down. I mean, I'm going to get slaughtered again, but I'm excited. You know what I mean? I've got some doozies that I'm pretty sure you're not going to get, but I know you're not going to let yourself lose, so I'm pretty sure my questions are going to be wicked hot. Now, we'll see how it goes. Now, I do this. <laughs> the only other graphic that I really have is obviously A Christmas Story is your favorite uh, film. It was my favorite for years and then was taken over by Elf with will ferrell when a lot of people don't like he's very you know hit or miss <clears throat> do you like will ferrell or not uh kind of like i guess I, I don't like colin ferrell but um yeah i mean will ferrell is very hit or miss you either like his movies or you don't you either like his company or you don't i'm not the biggest fan of elf um more so this movie um, by any means but oh did i bug out yeah just for a second all right. Well, I don't think it's a bad Christmas movie by any means, but it's definitely not my favorite. All right. Well, uh, do you want to ask the first question or do you want the first question for a Christmas story? Um, you can go first. Let's hear a question. OK, so this is uh, the Christmas story question that I've asked everybody since I was 14 years old. I asked all my high school friends know this answer by heart now. It's very obscure, but oh I just God. think it's hilarious. and I'll explain why. So the question is, what is the name of the Lone Ranger's nephew's horse? Victor. Nice. Yeah. yeah so ah. I've been asking that question. And, and one of the reasons I asked that question is because, you know, when the dad says, well, how the hell did you know that? She goes, everybody yeah. knows that. Everybody knows that one. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's nice. All right. I have to go into my notes here. So I don't know if it's going to turn my camera off or not. Um, yeah, yeah, you go black, but that's fine. Okay, well then I, I can send it right back. Um, all right, what are the two jobs that you can have as an elf other than a toy maker? Oh, that's easy. That's going to be um, uh, as a cobbler making the shoes when the cobbler falls asleep. And then the other one is uh, baking in the tree, like uh, the Keebler elves. Okay. Yep. Nice. So one, mm -hmm. one. Nice. Look. Uh -huh. Nice. Let's get it. 
<laughs> so let's see. Uh, this one I think is an easy one, especially if you know the film. But what's the name of the bully? Farkas. Uh, Scott Farkas? Yes, that is correct. All right. Uh, his buddy's Grover Dill, too, by the way. See, I did not know that one. Yeah. See, all these questions that came up with were pretty much stuff that I just knew. I didn't really have to look any of them up. I would have had to look up who his, uh, his toady was. His little toad? Yeah. All right. Um, oh, all right. So this one may be hard, kind of. Um, yeah. uh, when the nun lays baby Wolf Ferrell down in his crib, what is in his crib? Um, I mean, I thought it was just a, a bottle and blanket. You better hit that wrong buzzer. Okay. Uh-huh. What is it? There's a stuffed dog in his crib. Really? At the at the end of his crib, there's like a brown stuffed dog. Yeah. Because I know he goes for the, the teddy bear. In the the teddy bear. He does. He does. Which I, I immediately mentioned. I was like, wow, he's got a stuffed dog right there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a pretty good one. Then. All right. Yeah. So let's see. Um, in Ralphie's fantasy about when he first has that fantasizes about having the uh, Red Rider BB gun, mm-hmm. what's the name of the outlaw and his crew? Oh, that's a good one. I know that. And it's funny because I, I always mention to my daughter that we, as a kid, even as an adult, you still have those fantasies. Of yeah. like, oh, when I get to work, if this guy says this, I'm gonna you just <laughs> yeah. fantasize about how it's gonna play out. Yeah. Um damn. Bad, bad Brad, Black Brad. Fuck. I don't know. I don't know it. Damn. Oh. Uh-huh. I, I know Bart. I'm right there. I know. Yeah. Black Bart. Uh, uh I knew it. I was close, man. <laughs> I knew that one. I just couldn't remember it. You come back, you'll be pushing up daisies. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I know. and uh, when the dad says it, he goes, I think it's Black Bart, son. Like, <laughs> under the table hiding. Yeah. All right. Um, I won't do that one because that one hard. Uh, all right, those three are my hard ones. All right, here's one that okay. may be difficult, but it shouldn't be. Okay. What is Buddy's daughter's name? Susie. Good job. Okay. <laughs> As I say, it may be hard because you got to actually pay attention, but it shouldn't be hard because it's like they make a point to show it. So Yeah, they do. Um, and, and obviously a funny scene when he goes and sits on his lap, uh, Newhart's lap. Yeah. Who I, I love hilarious. Bob Newhart. I mean, he's funny. He was fantastic I, in that movie, too. He's so fantastic great. in general. I love his dry sense of humor kind of thing. But. But, yeah, it's just like, the, like an unassuming. Like, he doesn't realize he's part of it. Yeah. And so I think that that's uh, when I watched um, – the Big Bang Theory, you know, he was in there as like the professor. Oh yeah, the Professor over. Proton. Yeah. Yes. All right. So let me ask this one. Uh, Ralphie goes to the mall or the store, Macy's, whatever it is, and he goes and sits on Santa's lap. He spaces out. What does Santa recommend for a present? A football. That's an easy one. Man. Yeah, that's an easy one. Now here's another easy one. Okay. Uh, what does the little girl ask for at the doctor's office? Oh, Carolyn Reynolds. She asked for a uh, Susie talks a lot. Um, all right. So let's see. Uh, this one is, is, is again. I think it's an easy one for me because I've seen the movie so many times. And it, again, <laughs> should be for you as well. What is Little Orphan Annie's message? Uh, drink more Ovaltine, please. Or be sure to drink more Ovaltine, please. The judges will. Uh, be sure to drink your oval team. Oh, your oval team. My apologies. My apologies. <laughs> yeah. um, all right. What is Buddy's mother's name? Uh, Walter's wife? Or no. his birth mother? Buddy's mother's name. Yeah. Um, Susan Wells. Yes. I thought I got you there for a second. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. This is going to be the first like kind of toughish one. Yeah, mine are coming up too. So, <laughs> how long does it take the dad to change a tire? Uh, eight minutes. He wants it to be done in four minutes. Nice. Um, what are the four f- main food groups of the elves? Uh, candy, candy corn, candy canes, and syrup. Yeah, maple syrup. But yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um. 
What brand of soap does Ralphie's mom wash his mouth out with? Um, something boy, uh, low boy. Oh, fuck. It's a major plot point because if she'd used a different soap, he wouldn't the have gone Lux blind. Or the, if, she, if, she went, if she used the Lux or the Palm Olive, he would have preferred it. Um, but it's, it's, damn, it's, fuck, I don't know. Low, low boy? I'm just going to say low boy. Low boy? Life boy. Life boy. Life boy. Oof. Damn, I knew that one too. I even like made it a point to remember that one. And when he's blind and the dad's like, I told you not to use life boy. <laughs> I know. I made it a point to remember that too, and I still forgot it. Well, we're um, that's why I remembered right all three soaps. That's why I try to remember all three soaps because I didn't think you would ask me Life Boy. I thought you would ask what soap did did Ralphie prefer to use instead of Life Boy or something like that. Um, all right, here's my last easy one. What okay. song is Zoe Deschanel singing in the shower? Oh, um, Baby, it's cold outside. Which I don't understand the whole hullabaloo about that song. I know the, the where he's like, I love you know, what's in this drink, and yeah, he's like, hey, don't worry about that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's I don't know. That's like really the only kind of shady part in the song. But other than that, well, it's I mean, pretty the whole, wholesome. The whole song is about him trying to keep her from leaving. Leaving, you know, she yeah. She doesn't want to leave. She's just saying she should leave. She wants but to that, stay. But that sentiment is what makes it so controversial. It's like, hey, yeah, she really, she's saying no, but she really means yes. You know? Yeah, exactly. All right. What's up, Brandon, who joins us from Triple Shot Sports and uh, Man Hour on Louisville Radio. What's going on? Thanks for tuning in. We did have a great Christmas. Hope you as well did, Brandon. Hope you did as well. All right. So uh, this other I think we got another, another easy one. When the lamp arrives, what are they eating for dinner? Red cabbage, meatloaf. Meatloaf is what I was going for. Yeah. Well, he says red cabbage again first, but then they just show you meatloaf. So I wasn't sure which one you wanted. Yeah, but meatloaf, um, that, that's, the, that's the main protein, of course. Yeah. All right, here's the tough ones. Okay. Now, when Buddy gets arrested after the fight at the mall, what precinct does he go to? So I did make a point. Um, and watch this to pay attention. And I don't know if they mention the precinct, but they up don't. on the wall, there's a badge yes. 27th. Yep. All right. Good job. Yeah. And that's why say, I there's a scene where they're talking and they make sure to show the 27 behind it. But I wasn't sure if that was the precinct. I, I wasn't 100% sure. So, yeah. Um, all right. So let's see what we got here. Uh, Sam Sampson joins us. Says, uh, Sully, a uh, little Sam says, you need to shave if the Giants win the division. <laughs> the New York Giants? Um, I'm guessing, yeah. Uh, I mean, if the New York Giants, man, I don't know if I can do that. I haven't shaved my beard in so long. But for Lil Sammy, I'll do it. Lil Sammy, I got you. The Giants win the division. I'll shave my beard. I'll do it. I'll do it for you, Lil Sammy. <laughs> uh, so my next question is, what is Ralphie's teacher's name? Uh, Mrs. Shields? I almost said Fields. I almost said Fields. <laughs> and I would have been so mad. <laughs> all right. Now, we all know Mr. Walter Hobbs works at the Empire State Building. He does. What floor does he work on? So when I watched the film, I was trying to see what button he clicked, but I couldn't see clearly. Like I know it's near the middle because there's still a bunch of them, and he's like, hey, you know, this is my floor. So do they mention it at some point? Do they say what floor? They don't mention it, but this is where I had to pause the movie. Because if you, when he gets out of the elevator, you can clearly see what button is unlit and what floor is next. So you can clearly uh, see what floor they're on. Hmm. Yeah, I know. One, it's, it's a, it's, it was a, I even said, I was like, Ooh, he's going to be mad about this one. Uh, I mean, I'll, <laughs> I don't even know how many floors are on the Empire State Building. I'm going to say, uh, 30th. Whoa. 37th. Uh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He gets off on 30 <laughs> on 37 and 38 is the next lit button. So yeah. yeah I know, um, let's see. Uh, Brandon says uh, driving up to Vermont, New Hampshire today. Always love the drive through hours of Indiana cornfield. So at least you guys can keep me entertained while I do. <laughs> Nothing like those corn and soybean fields over there, man. 
Um, no, yeah, so uh, it always reminds me of the scene. Have you seen the movie Serendipity with John Cusack and Kate Beckinsale? I have not. Okay. It's a romantic comedy, so I, I happen to be a big rom-com fa- fan anyways. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one's pretty good. Uh, it's all about fate, right? You know, and so these two people, Kate Beckinsale and John Cusack, they meet each other in this uh, like Macy's or whatever, right? And they're like, she's got a boyfriend, he's got a girlfriend, but they're like, you know what? If it's meant to be, because they click so well together, they're like, let's mm-hmm. just test fate. She gets on an elevator and she goes, you're going to get on the next elevator. If we push the same floor and we get off on the same floor, then we're meant to be together. And it's like, of course, there's like 40 floors to choose from. So she gets on the floor. She hits like bing. It's like 12 or whatever. I can't remember the exact number. Mm-hmm. So he gets on the elevator like his. And he's like, oh, I don't even know. Like, he's freaking out. He's like, just hits a button. 12. Right. And then <laughs> like the next floor, the doors open up and this little kid gets on with a devil costume. He goes, clickety, 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 hits all the buttons. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's like the, that's it makes amazing. Me, makes me sick. That's it. So I'm guessing they don't end up being together. They do not, except the beginning of the movie. So the whole thing is about like how they didn't hook up, but they still always think about each other. Oh, wow. That's wild. Um, all right. So, so let's see. Uh, I actually think I'm on my last question here. I don't know. Are you in, where are you at? I think I'm on my last one as well. Let me look. Um, yeah, I'm on my last one as well. All right, so we're tied 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, I think this one's another easy one, which is uh, what magazine does Ralphie put the advertisement in that he hopes his mom will see it? I, I don't know. Oh, my daughter knew that one. I didn't know. I didn't. I honestly, I haven't paid attention. I just, I remember the back thing, but God. And the cover, I think, has Shirley Temple on it. Yeah, Newsweek? I don't know. Look Magazine. Look Magazine. Ah. God. All right, this is my chance to take it in a very close one here. I mean, if you get this one, I'd be shocked. Okay. What's the number of the cab that runs over, buddy? 4X27. Oh, he got it. That motherfucker. 60-yard <laughs> field goal for the win. <laughs> nice. In the fog. I feel like the Gators just got beat by LSU right now. Oh, now, had, man. Yeah, now there were – um. Oh, let's see. Uh, this one is from uh, Deb Sullivan. She says, uh, how does he pronounce fragile? It's obviously fragile. Fra- fragile. <laughs> must, must be, be Italian. Italian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, then the best, the mom goes, I think it's fragile. <laughs> I know. <laughs> does she so, ever get a name drop in that movie, by the way? I don't think she does. Neither do, right? I think it's just dad and mom and dad. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, and oh, wait. It, they, do they do they say his name when they drop off the package? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. Um, that would have been a good one. But uh, yeah, actually, I was a good one is you know what's his neighbor's name? The Bumpuses. Yeah, Bumpus, something like that. Bumpuses. Yeah. Um, I actually I love the scene in the very beginning uh, when the dad comes in. He's getting the pot of water. He's like, that son of a bitch would freeze up in the middle of July or the uh, on the equator. Quit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why did buy an old snowmobile? <laughs> Yeah, that I mean, damn! I can't believe I lost. There were some. I, I was actually so like I thought you might ask me uh, what's the name of the biker dude in the bar who wants the the doll playhouse. I was uh, gonna ask like things like that, but like I was gonna ask you what instead of what she wanted, I was gonna ask you what like one of the other children wanted, like the like the one kid wanted an electric guitar. Yeah, uh, I was gonna ask you that, um, but again, I didn't want to get too like over the top hard yeah, with that. I mean, there's also you know? like, uh, you know, what's the name of the newscaster, right? Charlotte Denon. Charlotte uh, Denon, yeah. And what did uh, she want? Yeah. And then, like um, uh, what are the names of Walter's two writers that recommend Miles Finch? Ooh, that I don't know. That one yeah. is uh, Andy Richter was Morris. They only just say yeah. his first name. And then the guy from Tenacious D was um, uh, Eugene Dupree. Ah. I love Tenacious D. Oh, yeah, fantastic. Pick a Destiny is so good. I haven't seen Pick a Destiny. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's hilarious. <laughs> All right, so that's kind of our, our game that we had. And like I said, it took up a good chunk of time. A little bit of sports yesterday. Obviously, we can talk about uh, the football game. We talked about it you know, before the season even started. We said, oh, man, there's a football game on Christmas? Like, that's going to crush the ratings. Um, and the ratings have not come out yet, but I am curious to see if they had as many viewers as maybe all of the NBA games combined. <laughs> yeah, I mean, 4.30 was an odd time, I think, to do it. You think they should have done it prime time, in my opinion, like, you know, 8 o'clock? I think they wanted to get everyone kind of like getting dinner ready and sitting down to watch it. 
Yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't think any, I don't think most, I don't know. I guess most families are, I don't, we don't watch TV while we're eating. Um, We'll watch it after, you know, I don't know how many families like watch it during, but yeah, I mean, again, that's really my only kind of statement. I'm assuming that they were, are going to trouse the NBA. I mean, there weren't that many great games on to begin with. So, I mean, you know, it, it wasn't like it was a, you know, uh, Lakers Nets or something like that playing. So, I, I don't know. Well, I mean, in, in fifty-two to thirteen, I don't know what the over/under was, but I'm betting I'm betting it was under eighty-five. Fifty-two to thirteen, yeah, would be no, 52 sixty-five. To 30, fifty-two to thirty-three. Oh, okay. I thought you said 13. I was like, um, you're bad at math. Yeah, I, I, I'm guessing it wasn't that high. Uh, the over definitely smashed. Uh, that was a wild game. I mean, an absolutely wild game. Alvin Kamara single-handedly won people fantasy championships this year or lost them, you know, depending on your point of view. But, I mean, as a Bucks fan, we need the Saints to lose games. But, you know, it is what it is. Yeah, It's good to see uh, Drew Brees out there. Obviously, uh he did all right. He had no touchdowns, two interceptions, but uh, you know, still threw for three hundred yards. Uh, only had seven incomplete passes. Yeah, I mean, he's. I know he's coming back from a pretty wicked injury, but I mean, he's going to need to be babied along in this offense for a while now. I think. Um, honestly, I just don't even think he's their best option. If I'm being honest, uh, I know we we aren't like. I know I haven't really kind of expressed that. Not a lot of people are Taysom Hill fans. I honestly think Taysom Hill is a better option for this football team going forward. Hmm. Uh, I don't know only because as a Patriots fan and watching Cam Newton play, the problem with Cam Newton is when you force him to pass, you know, when you stack the box and you make him pass because he can't. And mm-hmm. I don't know if Taysom, I mean, Taysom Hill might be able to pass better than Cam because who can't at this point, but he's still not a great passer. So I think if he's your quarterback, you know, just load the box. I Agree, except he has he has shown he can beat you with the pass. I mean, he had he went like twenty two at thirty six for like you know three thirty the other the other week before Drew Brees came back. Now again, you know you're never going to start Taysom Hill over Drew Brees. I get that, but I mean, I think the first sign of like another injury or something like that, I wouldn't hesitate to throw Taysom Hill in there. Well, at this point, I wonder is it Drew Brees' last year? So I mean, is he just trying? Oh to yeah, finish of course. Yeah, I think it is. I think it's definitely his last year. And that was what led me to a question I thought about because obviously you're the big draft guy. Uh, and, you know, once the regular season's over and we have everybody's record, you know, we could talk about doing a, obviously a first round mock draft and see what you got for, you know, where everybody's at. But mm-hmm. I'm curious, you know, are the Saints in the quarterback market? Oh, for sure. I mean, I think, I think they definitely are, um, especially there in that sweet spot in the back end where Mac Jones or Kyle Trask or a Jamie Newman or somebody like that, you know, can, can end up. Um, I mean, I definitely think they're going to be in the hunt. They're also a team that doesn't mind trading first-round draft picks. Mm-hmm. So they may just tra- trade their first for a DAC, or they may be in the DAC sweepstakes and we're not really you know, aware. They may be a sleeper team in that DAC sweepstakes. Um, because truthfully, I mean, I think they get DAC and they're an NFC favorite, you know, still kind of thing. Um, so I don't know if they'll want to go with a rookie quarterback and start over. Again, obviously, Jameis Winston – they don't think is the answer there if Taysom Hill's getting starts over him. But, uh, I mean, I think, yeah, they grab a, a Mac Jones, a Kyle Trask, let Taysom Hill play out the second year of his deal, and then, you know, bring in a Trask or a Mac Jones, and, and I think that's a, a great situation for New Orleans. And what about the other team, the Vikings, because you've got Kirk Cousins, who obviously isn't going anywhere next year. Uh, he's $31 million against the cap next year, but he's got like 45 and dead. But the year after that, it's 45 against the cap, only 10 dead. So that's going to be the year that he can get traded or released. And I'm thinking, uh, are the Vikings in the market to draft a quarterback and have him sit for a year? There is no team bigger in the quarterback market than the Vikings. They want to get out of this Kirk Cousins deal so bad. Um, I mean, it's it's really a shame. It's not their fault. He played extremely well on, on the, the franchise tag and kind of left them in a spot where – it was kind of, hey, what what else are you going to get other than me kind of thing? Like, I'm, I'm kind of the best option you have. And so he got a big deal. And, I mean, as soon as his dead cap and, and again, a hit goes to 10, he'll be he'll be gone for sure. All right. Um, that's all I really had up for that game. I don't know if you had any more on that. I was going to kind of get into the uh, – some of the NBA games again, not as entertaining. But No, yeah, let's do NBA. I mean, that's, that's all I had for that game. I mean, 
you know, that's, I mean, we said it all, essentially. I mean, the first game was uh, the Pelicans and the Heat. Uh, the Heat win. Zion Williamson, 32 points, 14 rebounds. What surprises me is that there's still a lot of people who are not on the Zion Williamson bandwagon. And I wonder if it's a, a product of the Trevor Lawrence thing. You know how there's people who root against Trevor Lawrence just because of the hype? Yeah. And obviously Zion had all that hype going back to the sophomore year of high school. You know, yeah. But this guy was the number one pick for the past three years before he came out. And so it's like, he's really good. It's I don't know how you can still think he's not going to pan out. Um, I mean, he didn't have the best game this game. I know his overall stat line looked good, but he didn't like actually play his best game this game. Um, but I agree. I mean, I just think he looks like a basketball player. I mean, he's just an athletic freak. He's He's got the ability to, I think, improve his game. And I think that's essentially just where it is at this point. He can clearly play with the NBA guys. He's going to need to now figure out what he doesn't do well and expand on that. You know, obviously develop an outside shot you know, develop a, an array of post moves. You know, he clearly plays above the rim very well. He's just going to have to learn to do the other things. And I think he's going to be a dominant player in the NFL. I mean, the NBA, honestly. Yeah, I mean, he shot like 74% from the field in college. Like, he's he's just amazing. And I know a lot yeah. of it's dunks, but if you watch it, like, he has great inside footwork. He does. He really does. Again, he just needs to develop a consistent, you know, outside shot that people respect. I mean, at that point, your game's unguardable. You know what I mean? So I think that's what everyone's striving to be, and that's what he needs to do as well. Now, the next game was the, the Warriors, who dropped to 0-2. You know, they lose to the Bucs. Uh, Giannis, 15 points, 13 rebounds. It was really Chris Middleton that game. But the promising thing for the Warriors is James Wiseman with 18 points, 8 rebounds. And he looks really good. I mean, I think that the consensus was if he had played a full NCAA season instead of just two games, he probably would have been the first overall pick. Oh, for sure. I mean, if James Wiseman put, I mean, he's an athletic freak. He's, he's long. He can defend. I mean, I think going into it, he was the far and away the number one overall pick. And then everything happened during the season. And, you know, obviously you don't see a guy play. A guy, a guy takes a year off. You know, other guys do better. You don't know what's going to happen. The bad thing for the Warriors is, is Kelly Oubre cannot shoot the ball right now. He is, I think it's 0 for 30 on, on shots that aren't dunks. Yep. He hasn't made a jumper. Yeah, he's struggling. Andrew Wiggins is struggling uh, to find his shot. Um, you know, Curry didn't look so great last game. And, and it just seems crazy that, you know, this is a Warriors team that you would think if they had Clay Thompson, they're like favorites a in the favorite West. Favorite in the West, yeah. And, and one of the favorites, yes. Yeah. And so I think to think that, you know, Clay is the biggest reason that they're not there. Uh, and I love Clay. I know we both do. I think that Clay is an MVP if he's on his own team and he's the star of the team. Um, but yeah, they really miss him. I think that's, I don't know if it's, that's the whole reason. I mean, 0 and 2 is nothing in a 72 game season, yeah. but you know, they have the tools, but it just seems like if, if they miss the playoffs, I mean, that's nuts. Yeah. I mean, if they miss the playoffs this year, it's, it's implosion time, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I mean, Steph needs to step up and play better. Um, and then, you know, these complimentary guys are can't continue to shoot this poorly. I mean, like I mentioned, Kelly Oubre not making a jumper is insane. The guy shot, I think it was 38% from three last year, like, and he can't even hit a jumper now. So, I mean, that's got to step up. Andrew Wiggins has to play better, like you mentioned. You know, it's, it's obviously a, a whole bunch of things, but, man, I mean, two games, like you said, is nothing. But, man, I'd be, I'd be a little worried. I'd be a tad worried. Uh, the next game, obviously, the New Jersey Nets or Brooklyn Nets, whatever you want to call them, Brooklyn. they look, yeah, they look really good. Uh, they're two and zero now. They beat the Celtics, uh, one twenty three to ninety five. Uh, Durant had twenty nine. Kyrie had thirty seven. Um, I mean, they just they look. They don't need James Hart. They, they could win the East right now. Yeah, they don't need help. Um, I, I don't think I'd mess. I, honestly, if I'm Brooklyn, I don't think I mess with it because I mean, having Jared Allen, having Karis LeVert, having Spencer Dinwiddie, and that depth, like is huge. Like it, it, it allows you to play this game where, you know, you don't have now I, I understand it's 37 and 29, but I mean, Kyrie scores 25 and not 37 and they still win the game. Like that's important. Like, you know what I mean? Like having your other pieces being able to step up and play as well as they are is, is incredibly important. And I mean, Kyrie and, and Katie's game are, are molded to play together. Well, out of this game came a couple of talking points that I was thinking because I debated uh, on Facebook quite a bit on these points. One is Jason Tatum. I do not think he's a top 10 player in the NBA. Uh, I think he's top 15, 
maybe top 20, but definitely in the conversation for 15. He's not in the conversation for top 10 for me. Hmm. I mean, I'd have to like really sit down and like look at, at the list. I mean, off the top of my head, I got Braun, Giannis, Anthony Davis, Harden, Katie, um, Dame Lillard, uh, Luca. Um, see, now I'm getting into so that's seven. Jason Tatum range. See, but I think Trey Young is better than Jason Tatum. Ooh, I don't think Trey Young's better than Jason. Tatum. I mean, I averaged 30 points and eight assists a game last year. Yeah, I mean, he's also a point guard who touches the ball every time. Um, uh, I think Jokic is a better player. Than- I th- I could I could I could roll with Jokic. Yep, I could roll with Jokic. Um, I, I'm okay with that. A Donovan Mitchell, I think I think maybe better than Jason Tatum. Probably. Um, yeah. They're they're in the same range. So right. that, that 11 to 15 is where there's a group of guys. Tatum's in that group to me, like the Russell Westbrooks, the um, Ben Simmons. Like he's in that group. Yeah. Okay. Now, I mean, I wouldn't. I don't. I don't think I'd be upset if somebody had him in the top. Like I don't think it's. Holy shit! You got Jason Tatum in the top ten, like, but yeah, I mean, I could see either way, honestly. Like, I could see him at nine or ten, and I could see him at eleven or twelve or thirteen. Like, I could see either way. I don't think that's a slap in the face. Now, how about this question? Because Kevin Durant obviously is phenomenal. Uh, I think he is an all-time great, even at this point, and he's still got quite a bit left in the tank. My question is: I've seen this debate, and I think it's a fair debate to have, um, which is Kevin Durant or Larry Bird. I think Larry Bird, um, mostly because of like his versatility. I think he was a better passer and defender. Um, I mean, I think Kevin Durant's the best. I think he's the most lethal scorer of all time. I mean, he's six ten. He's he's essentially unguardable. Um, but I mean, I, I think I just think Larry's better. I mean, Larry's just. I mean, he's got that legend feel too. That like you kind of just respect. I think. Like, I understand is like one on one. Yeah, sure. Maybe Kevin Durant wins, but like, fuck. I mean, Kevin Durant loses one on one to Shaq, probably. So, I mean, like, like what's the, you know, what's the, the precursor to one on one and things like that? Uh, I mean, I don't, it, I don't think I could move. I don't think Larry's a player. It would be very hard to move out of his spot on my list. Yeah, and I agree. I have Larry ahead of him. Uh, only you know, rebounding and passing are huge. Yeah, I don't think Larry is that great of a defender compared to Durant. Durant's not a bad defender. He's not James Harden. You know, it, no, I don't think he's bad. I just think Larry was like more well known as a defender. Like, like people like like he like would defend like teams' best players and things. Where I don't think Kevin Durant has ever kind of volunteered to do that. Well, and I think that the thing that makes Larry a little bit different to me is the mental edge, the basketball IQ. I mean, yeah. Larry was a successful NBA head coach. I don't think Durant could be. I don't know. Maybe someday, but not right now. And I don't see Durant being a coach. I, agree. I mean, he gets a lot of what he gets on his physical tools. And I think that Larry Bird, just the rebounding, the, the passing is huge. I mean, Larry Bird is huge. so underrated as a passer. I mean, he's, I mean, outside, LeBron took over the, the mantle, I think, as the best passing forward. But before then, it was Larry Bird and everybody else, in my opinion. Well, I think Larry Bird, in terms of passing, to me, is in the same conversation as Magic Johnson, um, as a, a Pete Maravich. As, I mean, guys just unbelievable court vision. I mean, I think LeBron's there. I mean, I think LeBron oh, I agree. is. Yeah. I, think, I mean, I'm not discounting Larry. Like I just said, I think Larry Bird's the best passing before LeBron was the best passing forward of all time. Um, so, like, I, I mean, I'm clearly not discounting the guys. But I just think LeBron's vision, I think, is like elite, elite, elite. Like, I mean... John Stockton vision, like shit like that. Like it was crazy or it is crazy, but I agree. I mean, Larry's probably just a notch below that. If that like it's, and I agree, that's what separates them. Well, let me ask this question. Cause we're kind of tailing into it. How about the best court vision slash passer of all time? And I mean, forget scoring, rebounding straight up, just passing court vision. All positions. Um, I mean, Jason Williams was crazy good. I know he had a lot of flashy passes, but his court vision was exceptional. Um, I mean, it's hard not to put LeBron really high in that spot. Um, man, because for me, it's Steve Nash. 
Yeah. I mean, Steve Nash just had such an – I'm like staring up. It's because I'm thinking. Uh, Steve Nash had such an incredible understanding of the offense he was in, which I think made him exceptional to the court vision and things like that. Like the the crazy like on-the-spot court vision stuff, though, like I don't know, man. I think it would be hard not to put LeBron like really high at one. So you're saying open court. Outside of the because I would say Stockton was a product of his offense in terms of. I agree. Of, I think well. he was as well. I I agree uh, with that as well. That's why I didn't mention him. I know I mentioned him with LeBron because I mean he does have insane court vision, but it's because he knew where his guy was going to be at all times. I think LeBron has the ability to do it in open court. Um, I mean Steve Nash as well. That was a really good one. Um, and Jason God, Kidd's up there. I, I was going to say I was just about to say Jason Kidd as well. Um, a lot of, I know Ricky Rubio now is, I mean, his court vision's insane. He doesn't get his due props. Um, his, his court vision's nasty. And and I'll bring him up again, because I think a lot of the younger viewers slash listeners aren't familiar, but Pete Maravich was insane. I mean, people really, the guy scored 4,000 points in his college career. He averaged like 40. 40. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was 42. But you watch highlight videos of this guy. And I mean, he knew where every single person on the court from both teams was at all times. His vision was insane. It's absolutely insane. Uh, short career, I think, because of injuries and whatnot. But yeah. I think Pete Maravich, wildly underrated. Yeah, I mean, I agree. His, I mean, obviously, he's, I think he's more well-known for his college career because, like I said, he's, he's the highest college average, I think, at 42 is the highest, um, which is insane. When he's at LSU, too, shout out. Um, but, yeah, I mean – I, th- I mean, a lot of people don't like I couldn't name like I was trying to think of an older guy I could name with the court vision. And truthfully, I just couldn't do one accurately. You know what I mean? And and consistently. So uh, I didn't want a shout out of the mouth. <laughs> yeah, well, for me, again, from the videos that I've watched, he's got the best court vision of any of the older players. Uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, Oscar Robertson is. I was, I was gonna, that was who I was going to throw out. I mean, but I watched the videos of him, double, but I mean, he doesn't. Maybe it's because he's not as flashy, but like Oscar Robertson didn't seem to have the same like eyes in the back of his head as some of the other guys that we mentioned. Yeah. And that's essentially what you have. Like you're able to see people that other people just don't even know are there. Uh, the last game we had for is the last game. I think it was. Yeah. Yeah. No, there's two more, two more games. Oh, yeah. uh, the Lakers uh, win 138, 115. Uh, Anthony Davis 28 and 8. LeBron 22, 7 and 10. Uh, Luca 27, 4 and 7. I've seen people say that. Luca is going to take LeBron's throne. And I mean, I don't think that's unrealistic, but I don't understand how that's, I think it's thrown out there as like an insult. And I'm like, well, LeBron's like 40. So well, he's got to take Giannis's throne first too, if yeah. you ask me. So, um, but I mean, we all know my affinity for Luca here. I think on this show, I think he is the absolute bees knees. If I'm starting a franchise, He's my out and away number one pick. I don't even, there's not even a close second in my opinion. Um, and that's counting Giannis or Anthony Davis, who I love also. Um, but I mean, again, like I said, he's 23 and, and, you know, like you mentioned, he's, I don't even think he's taken over the mantle of Giannis yet. Uh, he's still got a lot to do in this league and he's going to do a lot. I think that's really unfair. So you know, let the kid be a kid and, and just play basketball for a little while and, and see what he turns out to be. I'm also my one knock against uh, Luca, which is actually something I like about him. So I'm actually going to knock him for something I like is that he seems to have a lot of fun. Like he's out there and he's having mm-hmm. a, a really great time. I haven't since Kobe left the league. I mean, we haven't seen, I don't think anybody that has like that killer, like I will kill you at all costs mentality. And I kind of missed that. Like, I wish there was somebody in the league that had that. Yeah. I actually agree. Everybody's kind of friends now. And they're all like, buddy, buddy, ha, ha. And, I mean, Kobe was friends with a lot of people and was still able to have that I will step on your throat mentality. Um, I, I, I agree. I'd, I'd want to see that again. I, I'm trying to think. I think Jimmy Butler kind of has that mentality. Well, I, I, um, Donovan Mitchell a little bit has uh, – Yeah. He plays really hard. He uh, plays really Russell Westbrook actually has a little yeah, I think most of Westbrook's more just playing hard and out of control. I don't know if it's I'll step on your throat kind of thing, but I, I mean he's the he's the closest one for sure. Yeah, um, I'd always said that I remember building my all fire team, all heart team, whatever you want to call it, and, and thinking, can you imagine a team that had Allen Iverson, Kobe, 
Jordan and KG at least. To, to, I mean, like that that the attitude on the team would just be insane. I mean, yeah, ball dynamics would never work, but I mean, the attitude on the team would be insane. I don't know who the center would be. Maybe ben, ben Wallace or somebody like that. Yeah, Ben Wallace could do that. Um, who else had that? I'll fucking shit. Uh, I mean, just go Bill Lambeer, man. Fuck it. Well, I would even say, I mean, Shaquille O'Neal. So he, the problem with Shaquille O'Neal is that, you know, he didn't seem like he really wanted it his entire career. Mm-hmm. But when he did really want it, you weren't going to stop him. You were going to stop him. Yeah, it. exactly. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, the last game I had for the basketball was uh, the the Clippers. The Clippers win to improve to 2-0. Um, you know, Kawhi and PG-13 I mean, seems to be working out. I mean, uh, Kawhi had to get eight stitches in his mouth. I don't know if you saw that yet. Ran into a yeah, elbowed basketball. hard. Got elbowed hard as fuck. Oh, it was gnarly. Um, but, like, man, eight stitches in the mouth. That sucks. Shit, yeah. And can you imagine trying to, like, eat and drink after that? Oh, it would suck. Um, I mean, they look good. They look down. Paul, Paul George is playing like regular season Paul George. We'll see how he plays in the playoffs because he turns into Clayton Kershaw. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, until he can step up and, and prove that he can play in the playoffs, I don't, I honestly, I don't care what he does in the regular season. It's to that point with Paul George. Um, three games today for the NFL, right? Uh, your Bucks and the Lions. How you feel about that? Big game. We have to win. I mean, we're expected to win. Obviously, it's the Lions. We better fucking beat the Lions. But, I mean, we have to win now that the Saints won. We got to keep pace at this point. And, I mean, we haven't been playing peak football as of late. We've looked kind of sloppy. We got lucky that we were playing the Falcons, and they're the biggest choke artists in the world. So we were able to beat them last week. But, I mean, we need we need this win bad. And since we're talking about Tom Brady, uh, I will say that one of the things I can't stand in the, the – the social media world universe is people bringing up, Oh, I guess, you know, Bill needed Tom more than he needed Bill. And, and to me, I've always said it's really 50, 50. I mean, Bill is the greatest coach of all time. Tom's the best quarterback of all time. It was a perfect pairing, but listen, I hate the whole, uh, so Bill actually needs a good quarterback. Yeah. Every coach needs a good quarterback. Yeah. That's the most ridiculous argument. Like, Oh, he actually needs a hall of, well, every great coach needs a great like they're so hand in hand it's the same thing with the wide receivers and you need a great weapon it doesn't matter what it is like you can't do it by yourself it's all i mean the arguments are ridiculous like it, it really doesn't make any sense like it's 100 percent. even if it's not 50 50 it's 60 40 it's not like one or the other it's it's people want to make things so you know drastic and and I just think they need to realize that, hey, look, these are like symbiotic relationships, man. Like, there's really a lot of give and take and, and need from each other. So, I mean, you could make the case that a guy like, uh, you know, John Gruden, you know, won a Super Bowl with Brad Johnson, had a very competitive, I think he got to a Super Bowl with Rich Gannon, didn't he? I mean, they're yeah. right there. So it's like he didn't really have the great quarterback. But at the same time, I don't think anybody's comparing John Gruden to Bill Belichick. And it, I mean, also, you have to put that in context. Rich Gannon, at the time was an all pro quarterback and, and one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Granted, he'll never go down as an all time great, but he's no scrub either. And the Brad Johnson Super Bowl was one with arguably the greatest defense of all time. You know what I mean? It's the O2 Bucks. It's in the same context as the 2000 Ravens and the 85 Giants and the, or 85 Bears and the, you know, all of those teams. So it's, it's, it's got the same argument. So those two, I mean, while I agree, you can, you don't have to have a stud. You know, those you have to take into context. And like you said, John Gruden isn't Bill Belichick and Brad Johnson isn't Tom Brady. And like these guys aren't mentioned as the greatest. Like, yeah, anybody can win one with a random guy. It's it's the greatest of all time usually has help. You know what I mean? Like you can't get there on your own. Now, let me ask you this, because maybe you'll have some bias. You're the head coach of the all time historical NFL football team. Right. Mm-hmm. And you've got to hire your assistants for defensive coordinator. You've got Monty Kiffin, Rob Ryan, Bill Belichick. I mean, Bill Belichick. Who's the coach then? You. You're the head coach. Oh, Bill Belichick's my assistant. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Monty Kiffin and everything, but that defense was is very schematically dependent. Um, it's like, I mean, you had to have you had to have Warren Sapp. You had to have Simeon Rice. You had to have Derek Brooks. You had to have Dexter Jackson. 
You had to have Rondé Barber. Like you had to have these exact piece guys to fit that scheme perfectly. Bill Belichick can have guys and scheme multiple ways to beat you, which I think is the difference. And, and that's the thing that I think when I watched the the thirty for thirty, the two Bills that that blew my mind was when they were playing the um, the Buffalo Bills, who obviously were averaging forty points a game, whatever it was at that point. Mm-hmm. And I think Parcells was like, I don't know, how are we going to slow this team down? And I think Belichick said, well, we need to have like two defensive linemen and we'll have nine defensive backs, essentially. And Parcells was like, well, we don't have nine defensive backs. So Belichick's like, well, let's put some wide receivers out there. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you like, you know, they've got to figure out ways and scheme ways. And that's what's made Bill great. Bill, Bill is great because he is smarter than the other guy. Plain and simple. All right, uh, 49ers Cardinals uh, rematch. It was week one, right? It was the uh, 49ers Cardinals. Um, so we're back at it. And uh, yeah, uh, Kyler Murray versus uh, maybe Josh Rosen. <laughs> yeah, I think Josh Rosen's going to get the start. Um, we'll nah, see. No, he's, he's not. Uh, you know, again, if you know, Collins uh, goes out there and throws two picks right away, I mean, yeah, why not? Oh, that's right. You never know. You never know. Um, yeah, I mean, I think at this point the the Cardinals are the better team, so we'll see how it works out. But, I mean, the division games, you never know. This was the game that I called the Cardinals would win to try and make the playoffs. I don't think that's possible now, but, I mean, still, they've had a great season. Who would you, as again, as a draft guy, going back to that, who of all the players in the draft do you think fits that Cardinals offense, defense? Like, what are you looking at in terms of, like, what do you want to add in the first round? Right now? Right now. I mean, they probably need offensive line help, um, and then they need help on the defense anywhere and everywhere. Um, they played better, but, I mean, they need help. Patrick Peterson's 100. Um, you know, they just need help uh, on a lot of spots. I think they need a dominant edge rusher like every team. You know what I mean? Something like that. Um, I mean, truthfully, they're, they're a talented football team, but they need a lot of help. I think Kyler Murray and that offense kind of carries them. And possibly no Larry Fitzgerald next year, but although he still looks like he can catch the ball. so Yeah, he still looks like he can catch the ball. And they're a team that runs multiple wide receiver sets, so wide receivers are always going to be high on their board. They run more four, four wide receiver sets than anybody in the league. So, you know, a wide receiver is always going to be extremely high on their big board. Uh, Dolphins Raiders, we get to see Tua Tagovailoa again. And uh, I'd love to see him win, although I also love Derek Carr, so I kind of want to see him win as well. Uh, sorry, somebody called me. Um, uh, so, um, Tug of Iloa for one, not tag. Um, I know it's T A, but it's pronounced Tug of Iloa. And I actually think this is going to be a really good game. He looks like he is the number one overall prospect, like we all thought he was before the injury. Um, the Dolphins are, I think, a better football team with him playing. And I think they got a real shot to beat the Raiders. Um, you know, the Raiders have been a weird team. They're like, they're so good at sometimes, and then they're so bad at others. It's so difficult to watch them. Their defense is atrocious. Uh, Brendan Milnes jumps on the show. He says, how about Kingsbury giving up on Rosen to take Murray? That team would be trash still, in my opinion, if he hadn't made that move. Yeah, I mean, we've talked about that, I think, ad nauseum. I'm, I'm in the camp that you don't worry. That's why I think... I don't care if you're just took Sam Darnold, you take Trevor Lawrence. You know, if you think Justin Fields is better, you take Justin Fields. It doesn't matter. Um, uh, quarterbacks are like lottery tickets. Just because you have one doesn't mean you don't buy another one. You know what I mean? Like you buy one until you hit the jackpot, essentially. So uh, He also says, uh, plus stealing Hopkins. I don't know if it's really a theft at this point because uh, Bill O'Brien was walking around like dropping money out of his pocket. He had a hole in his pocket. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely a theft, but I mean, it's it, it. I mean, it is what it is. Like they should have gotten a first, but to get the second isn't terrible. I mean, Houston was in a spot where they just needed. I mean, they, they should have gotten a first, be, only because they simply don't have one this year. But I think they'll end up trading their seconds for a first. So, all right, we'll see what they do with that. I mean, uh, again, I'm very excited to see Miami. Uh, get that first round pick in the top in like 10. the top five yeah i know yeah, top five. and then uh, also have, uh, have another pick later on in like the 20s 
Um, I mean, to imagine they could add somebody like a Jamar Chase to that offense is like scary. I know they're they're big fans of Michael Parsons, and and I assume Brian Flores would fall in love with Michael Parsons. Um, but so they're in a really good spot to end up with a premier player out of this draft. Right, there. and I think, and when you get into the twenties uh, again, I think where they're struggling because they're wide receiver. I, I like Parker, and I like um, who's the, who's the other the tall Preston, right? Preston, Preston Williams, yeah, and then like Jakeem guys. Grant. Yeah. Uh, but I think that they're they've gone through like nine running backs this year. Um, so I think that if you get into the twenties, if you can get a guy like uh, Etienne or Najee Harris, right? I mean, honestly, uh, uh, yes. I mean, I would love to see that draft come away with a Jamar Chase and then a Travis Etienne. I think that'd make that offense stupid fucking scary. Um, yeah, see, uh, do I have another? Oh, no. okay. I'm sorry uh, for cursing. Oh, no, that's fine. I won't scold you for it. Uh, My mom will, though. The, uh, the Patriots, just to get the last game I had, obviously there's a bunch of games tomorrow uh, as well, but the, the Patriots are playing the Bills. They're probably going to lose that game. Bill Belichick is not loving people asking him about Jarrett Stidham. Like, he is getting really <laughs> annoyed with it. But I think that 85% of the fan base at this point is like, why is Jarrett Stidham not named the starter yet? I, I, I mean, agreed. At this point, it's what, what, how much worse can you play? Like, like what else could happen? Like, why not play him at this point? That's what I, he literally has to like be in the shittiest of dog houses with Bill Belichick at this point. <laughs> I have no idea uh, what he did. I mean, I remember there were rumors with Malcolm Butler was that he punched Belichick's son. Yeah. Like yeah. And nothing's really come out like that, but that was kind of one of the speculations. I mean, I don't know what Jarrett said. did. He like, wrecked his car, like dumped trash on his lawn, like in all the right moves, Tom Cruise. I don't know. He had to have seen his wife naked or something. He, it, he had to have done something that I don't know. I truly don't. Does Bill Belichick have a daughter? Is I Jared so. Stid- did Jared Stidham like, bang his daughter and then not call her back or something because like that honestly that's what it sounds like it's it's definitely a weird and then what i think makes it worse is okay so let's say he does play him and and sidham actually gets the start which he still hasn't named a starter but you know sidham gets a start goes out there looks good even if he loses you know i i really see bill at this point even if sidham goes out there throws for 311 two touchdowns two picks let's say you know and then after the game, Belichick being like, "Well, see, that's what you get. We lost." <laughs> yeah, exactly. One hundred. I mean, he's. It, that's the problem now. Is it? If I'm Jared Stidham, I feel like the team doesn't want me there. Doesn't want me to be the starter, and I has no confidence in me. So, at that point, like, what can I even do? Kind of thing. Well, at that point, if that's what you really believe, then you ball out and try to get you know a nice trade to a situation where you can compete for the starting spot next yeah but year. they won't even play him. you know what i mean they won't even play him. they won't even give him a chance so. no, 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 right, right. i'm just saying if they did play him and then they're like kind of douchey about it you know how he plays i mean yeah you know, all you can do if you get that chance is just do as good as you can do and then if they want to move you they want to move you don't take it personal it's a business you know but if jared stidham yeah, again sure. he's a guy from, he's from texas you know he's a top five high school prospect he went to baylor he was super highly rated there which is a texas school right um Yep. You know, if you're the Dallas Cowboys and you move on from Dak Prescott, I mean, why wouldn't you take a look at Jarrett Stidham to bring in just to compete? You know, why not say, hey, let's bring him with these weapons? I I mean, I, I think he still has the potential to be a starter. I thought very highly of him coming out. So, I mean, if I'm running a franchise, I'd give him a shot. And I didn't have a quarterback. You know what I mean? I'd give him a shot. Yeah. I don't know. Yes, we'll see what happens there. Uh, so, yeah, obviously we're, we're done a little bit early uh, today. We got through the game, which uh, I, I guess I won on a Hail Mary. If, you, if you're tuning in now, make sure you go oh. back to the beginning and you know, listen to the game. And, uh, <laughs> it's a fun game. I really can't wait to do it again. Uh, I'm not sure what movie we'll do next. Uh, obviously, we have Monday show coming up. I don't think we'll do it then. We do the top five prospects. We're going to recap the football games. Uh, mm-hmm. Saturday, we're going to have the Atlanta Hawks writer, uh, Kevin Schwinnard, on. So he's going to talk about Trey Young, my guy, and uh, you know the Atlanta <laughs> Hawks and what he thinks. And, uh, yeah, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. We appreciate it, guys. I hope you had a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday this season. And, you know, hopefully everybody stays safe and has a Happy New Year. And we'll uh, we'll see you Monday. All right. And, again, I don't have a, a graphic, so we'll just uh, do Kenny's voice here. It's over!